West of Loathing is harder than Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is one of the most brutal and difficult open world RPGs I've ever played. The hardest mode in Deus Ex, the one above hard, is trivially easy and um, just provides no challenge. Um, I can't play Dishonored 2 on anything above the easiest difficulty setting. Um, both the both Batman Arkham Asylum and Arkham City are fine on normal difficulty, but Spider-Man, the new one, the PlayStation one, is way too difficult even on the easiest setting. Um, and if you played some of those games, I probably said some of the things that you disagree with, and uh, that's good because my point is the difficulty is random. It varies person by person and game by game to an insane extent. Just an extent that doesn't feel like it's widely acknowledged. There's the zeitgeist and the discussion around uh, the Souls games is, is they're super hard. And the, the consensus around Sekiro is it's the hardest one. It's, it's uh, even more brutal than previous one, even more unforgiving to new players. Um, I heard that multiple times from people who played every single one of these games to completion, and uh, that is just completely not the case for me. It's the, I've only played Dark Souls before, but it's much easier than Dark Souls for me. Um, and it's not easy. I'm not good at it, <laughs> and I was terrible at Dark Souls. Um, and this is not about my skill level, and it's not about... Uh, I'm not contradicting those people. I'm not even saying they're wrong. Um, I'm just saying it's completely different for every person, and there's no way to predict it, and it's just totally random. And this is, obviously I'm saying difficulty is subjective, but that's kind of, I think we all probably know that to some extent. That doesn't go far enough for me. That, just, that sounds like, ah, uh, yeah, okay, it has this fixed level of difficulty, but for each person they can vary a little bit above and beyond that. I am saying it is out of control random. It is completely insane. I cannot get anywhere on West of Loathing. I can't get anywhere. Every single fight I can take on, I am killed before I even get a turn. I don't get to play. I'm just completely annihilated straight away. <laughs> I don't know why. I did something wrong in the like, level up process. Mutant Year Zero, that is generally regarded as pretty hard, but even on the easiest difficulty, I would have, I honestly would have said, if I hadn't talked to any other players, I would have said this is technically impossible, it cannot be done. No player can ever complete this, because I've just, I've killed every enemy I can possibly kill, I now don't have enough damage to, to take out a single person, and if I don't take them out in one round, they summon like nine more people immediately, and I can't take out three people. <laughs> they are, every enemy I can fight now is more than 12 levels above me, <laughs> and there's, they are also outnumber me. So it just seems fundamentally impossible. And games that just, they just have so many factors that go into them and everything you do affects everything else to such a profound extent. Um, my friend Marsh is playing Prey at the moment and finding it, um, he's running out of ammo even on easy. And I remember my friend Zach had that same problem. When I played Prey, I played on normal and I just, sorry, I think I just said prayed on normal. <laughs> I played on normal and I just had like 79 med kits and 85 mana syringes and I just had all the resources I could possibly want. And it's because everything affects everything. Every person is completely different in the way they function and the way they think and the way they play. And you can't control this stuff. And this is not even getting into accessibility. I mean, that's obviously uh, makes it even more different person per person. Um, and I won't go deep into that because it's just, um, that's a very clear cut case that we probably all mostly agree on, that um, a game's difficulty is radically different if you have a disability versus if you don't. Even if you restrict your sample set to only people with no disabilities, even if you restrict it by a bunch of other criteria like only 25 to 35 year old men who speak uh, English as their primary language and um, who all got the same grades in high school, you would still see massive differences in how difficult they find individual games. And it's also, it's underreported partly because people don't like to, people have a lot of hang-ups about saying things in either direction, um, but especially in, in saying they found a game difficult. Although actually even that isn't true, you, like universally, even that varies dramatically person by person. I have a lot of friends who almost every game they play they will tweet about it to say, man, I love this game, but I suck at it. God, I'm so bad at it. Like that, that is the only thing they ever say publicly about how they're finding any given game is that they find it way too hard and they suck at it, but they love it. And I don't know if those people are ever finding any games easy, but if they are, they don't tweet about it. And there are other people who will never say they find the game difficult. They will say the game is bullshit <laughs> or they'll say they love it and they're brilliant at it. And if this is a problem in, I saw a, uh, exchange on a forum about um, Druidstone, which is um, a sort of turn-based tactics game, 
which I had to play on easy mode and found way too difficult on medium and um, somebody was posting on the forums. A lot of the consensus around it, I was surprised to read actually that like almost um, a lot of the comments were saying how brutally hard it was. Both the people who liked it and the people who didn't like it were saying this is brutally, insanely hard. And I had to remind myself, oh yeah, it was insanely hard when I played on medium for like five minutes before I thought, oh, this is way too hard, I'm picking on easy, and then I just had a good time for the whole rest of the game. And this post was from someone who found it, like, oh, this game is crazy hard. It's just, like, they just made it brutally hard just to stretch out the running time, and that's the only reason it takes, like, 12 hours. Um, and if it wasn't for that, if you played it on easy, I'm sure it'd be, you could complete it in, like, eight hours. And, uh, man, I'd probably even enjoy it more like that. And then someone replies, have you tried it on easy? And they says, look, I'm not. And then they use an ableist slur and basically said that they would never play on easy, no matter what. <laughs> because it's there's a stigma to it for them and like I say for other people it's almost the opposite like they were they were very happy to broadcast that a game is way too hard for them and just publicize that it's almost like I wonder if that's almost like a defense mechanism um, for to sort of get out ahead of the criticism like rather than let people like, tell you oh you suck at this get good you come out and say I suck at this and then there's, there's nothing I can say to you um, and yeah, even when I was telling you all those things at the start about how difficult or easy I find various games, I could feel like there's, when I tell you this one's hard, I can feel the people saying, oh, fuck, is it like, yeah, good, that's all trivial, that fucking, that first boss in Spider-Man is no problem at all, just do it this way. And, uh, and when I said things were easy, I could feel, oh, it sounds like I'm bragging, but I'm not, I'm really not, it's just random, it just has nothing to do with, you know, any meaningful qualities. It's just everyone is different. Games go in different directions very, very fast. They branch very, very quickly in ways that you can't, you know, Spider-Man is not a narrative branching game as far as I know, as far as I got, because I can get very far. Um, it's not something where like, oh, because I made meaningful equipment upgrade choice A when the game first started, that's why I'm having such trouble. I'm talking about like a micro massive branching where every little decision you're making is changing everything on every level uh, in a million different ways. And so uh, the kingpin fight at the start of Spider-Man, it's the first boss, it's part of the tutorial basically, it's really early. It's, it is in a place uh, early enough in a major enough mainstream enough game that is obviously you know aimed as much at kids as it is at adults um, although that doesn't really mean anything with difficulty, um, that I assume it is not intended to be especially difficult. Like, it's part of the learning experience of the game, you're supposed to get through this and then get into the real game. You're not in the open world yet, you have not got to the game by any meaningful definition. This is the tutorial, and I had to play that fight maybe 40 times before I finished it. And I gave up completely on the game twice, like I was I just... I'm never playing this game again. This is way too hard. This is way too frustrating. This is on the easiest difficulty setting. I went down to that, you know, as soon as I failed a couple of times. And I tweeted about it in frustration, and which is how I solve all problems in my life, and got loads of responses from people, um, some um, derisive and some uh, genuinely trying to help, and some from people who had the same problem, who said, yeah, I also thought this was insanely difficult, and then it just clicked for me when I realized, oh, you've got to keep moving, you've got to always be jumping and always doing this. I read like advice like that from you know five or six different people. Uh, there's, there was clear consensus on what the trick was, went back to it with that advice in mind, absolutely destroyed by it again and again and again, another 10 times, and gave up in frustration forever and again. And then I can't remember why I finally went back to it the third time. I think maybe I was just really bored, <laughs> or I was about to uninstall it, and I probably thought like, oh, I'll just give it one more go and uh, again got completely destroyed by another like 10 times and then suddenly oh I just did it at that time it wasn't that difficult it just worked fine and it's just fucking AI it's randomness it's there are so many things going on that there's just going to be if you play it 40 times there's going to be one time in 40 where AI basically doesn't work very well it just doesn't fails to target you at the right times or people get you know behind each other in a way that they don't know how to deal with very well um, and I did not, none of the tactics that people suggested helped me at all, they didn't maybe do any better at all, and the thing that eventually worked, I was just playing the same damn way I played it, you know, the last five times, and this time it just worked for some reason. <laughs> it's random, it is totally random. Obviously there are, um, some absolutes, like you could make a game that's literally impossible where there is no route to completion, 
Uh, you could make a game where there's no way to fail. Um, you could make a game where there's no way to even fail to progress. Like after X minutes, you just get bumped onto the next bit of it. And so everyone who plays for X minutes will, uh, or X times 10 minutes will, will get through uh, the whole game. There are absolutes like that, but that's obviously extreme. I don't know of any games that are truly impossible. I heard of one once actually, but I don't know anything about it. Um, and, you know, there are games where there is no challenge intentionally, and that's it's not very interesting to discuss the difficulty of that, because um, uh, it's obvious. But in the vast expanse between those extremes, which is 99.9% .9 of the games, um, or no, I suppose it's 99.9% it's of games that have some challenge intentionally, um, which is by no means uh, all games. Um, within that, the difficulty varies far more than I will admit, and when you're a developer trying to make a game that you want, like the, the notion of a designer's intent is just an absolute hilarious fiction. <laughs> like there is, uh, it's impossible. It's fundamentally impossible for a designer to have an intent about the difficulty level of the game and have that actually be uh, experienced by, you know, even 70% of the players. Nowhere near 100%. Like uh, I would be surprised if it's ever as high as 20%. It is so different per person. And is underreported because of those stigmas I talked about. And we had this exact problem with heat signature where I, my method for um, for it, adjusting difficulty of that game was um, to test remotely by sending out builds and have people fill in a, a questionnaire about how they played. And so I'm relying on players to self-report their problems. And I assume that I know that that's going to be skewed, I know I'm not going to get a scientific um, representation. All I want is to, you know, I'm inviting like 2,000 people into these beaters. So I'm hoping that, that if the game is too hard, we'll hear from a couple of people who found it too hard. And um, we did hear from people who found it too hard, and we made it much, much easier. <laughs> and we fixed loads of accessibility and difficulty problems uh, for, you know, three years. <laughs> we were testing it for a long, long time. And I was taking to shows, I was seeing people play it for the first time and, and go from no understanding, never having heard of the game, to being able to play it competently, went through rounds and rounds and rounds of that testing, getting easier and easier and easier, more and more accessible, more and more accessible. Um, and then we sent review copies out and a significant number of reviewers could not complete any mission above the medium difficulty. And this is not, uh, difficulty in heat signature is not a setting that you pick at the start of the game and then stick to, it's uh, per mission. So the missions listing board always has some easy missions, always has some medium ones, always has some hard ones, always has some audacious ones, always has some mistake level missions. So there's like seven difficulty levels and um, I didn't just list seven but there are seven. Um, and they, the intent is that you go up through them. Like you get more stuff, you just get better equipment. You can you can kick yourself out with things that counteract the difficulty levels, the, the difficulties that are being added at these higher levels. And the intent is that you, you get to the hard and, and audacious missions, A, because the more interesting challenges are there, there's more variety, there's more interesting stuff, and B, because those are the ones that get you more progress towards liberating the galaxy, which is your long-term goal. So the long-term progress rate is tied to the difficulty of the missions you're doing, and it turned out that um, most reviewers could not do any hard missions, and you're supposed to be doing hard missions, you know, as soon as you get some decent kit and you understand how the game works, you're supposed to be doing those as the norm, and going up to audacious and mistake, and then your personal mission is, is um, a level above that. Uh, and that wasn't happening, and we didn't, we had, according to the test data, we had fixed the difficulty problem. Like, we had a difficulty problem when we fixed it, and people stopped reporting it, and um, it turned out we had not. And people just, the people who were finding it that difficult, who were so far behind the curve that we expected the player to be at, would just weren't reporting it, because Maybe because they assumed the problem was with them and that, that it wasn't the game's fault. Maybe they're embarrassed. Maybe they just hated the game so much they didn't want to even give me any feedback. They're just like, fuck this, oh God. Uh, or maybe they just thought, well, nah, this isn't for me. I don't think I'm the right person to give them feedback on this. So we missed that problem. Obviously, there's a problem with my testing process. <laughs> I wouldn't suggest uh, completely relying on that. What I, the way I'll fix that is I want to do analytics next time. So we just find out, like, you know, obviously you agree to it when you play the, the test build, and then we find out, did they get anywhere with it? How many people did play through and, and get this far? That kind of stuff. But you are still never going to get to a game where it's just balanced. That notion is insane. Um, so the question is, what what can you do? Like, how can you even start to address this problem? And I'll make that a whole separate video.